Well, I keep trying to get to our jackal den, and um, I keep finding lions along the way. I'm not going to complain about that. It definitely wasn't my plan, but that's why we have to be flexible in our approach to a morning safari or an afternoon safari. We've got one of the Kichwe males, also known as the Triangle Boys, also known as the... What's the other name for them? Oh, for goodness sake. Why has it gone out of my head? We've got one of the dominant male lions of this particular northern part of the triangle. So they're dominant over the three marsh breakaways, the Angamas and the Sausage Tree Pride, and possibly others, but, but the, that's the sort of the main territorial core that I've seen them, as well as the females that spend a lot of time around Kichwe Airstrip. And a moment ago, he had his head up, and I was going to try and work out exactly who it was. It's not the big dark-maned male. It might be half-tail. I haven't seen his tail flick, but I haven't. I don't see a tip to his tail. Half tail's missing about, you guessed it, a third of his tail. Hello, boy. Here we go, head up. Much blonder than the dark-haired male. Now, he looks relatively well-fed and quite happy and actually in really good health, but we have a question about how long a lion can go without eating before it is too late and they've essentially reached the point where they're too weak to be able to hunt for themselves. You're looking at them being really hungry at around about a week. They can go longer than that though, and by around about three weeks or so, that lion is unable to feed itself, it's unable to hunt for itself. If it's fortunate, because that, that situation might have been caused by an injury, if it's lucky and it's part of a pride or perhaps part of a coalition, it may still be able to survive because if the rest of the lions are healthy, they'll be able to keep hunting and the lion, they will let that lion feed. So it's, it's always a bit of a complicated situation. I've seen a lioness with a broken leg and I mean, she was impossible to find. Every time we tried to find her to treat her, she disappeared. But she survived for about a year. She was an old lioness as well. She survived for about a year with a broken leg, thanks to the rest of the pride looking after her. Or at least, not, not necessarily looking after her, but looking after themselves and allowing her to feed with them. Isn't, doesn't he just look so beautiful posing in the morning sunlight? wind blowing through his mane. Riti, throughout last night we were all serenaded to by the sound of the lions roaring as well as the tree hyraxes which is a different kind of serenade altogether. I'll play that sound for you. It's um, profoundly unpleasant actually to be completely honest with you. The, reasons that li the reason that lions roar is because it's their way of, I mean you must have heard Brent do the Who's Land Is It. If you haven't, ask him to do the Who's Land Is It. It's a winner. Everybody loves it. Essentially they're proclaiming that they are there, this is their territory and it would pay for nobody, it would, it would not pay for anybody to come and trespass. And the lionesses do it because lioness, lion prides are territorial and the males do it because they are territorial. And it's a way of marking their territory without having to fight. So obviously they do mark their territory by scent, they, they scrape, they urinate, but they roar as well. And it's basically, it's, it's a way of keeping in contact with all of the lions in the surrounding areas and marking their territory at the same time. So if the Angamas, if, let's say this male started to roar now, the Angamas would probably respond, not, not, not always, but probably, and you get a sort of a chain reaction of lions roaring. And that way the lions, lion prides know to stay out of each other's way and the males know to stay out of each other's way and at the same time he can find the other members of his coalition by roaring. He can follow the sound of their roars to where he needs to go. Now that is why lions roar. It is a unique thing um, about the panthera cats, the ability to roar. Leopards can actually technically roar as well. That's the sawing sound that you hear and it's exactly for the same reason. And it's done by a unique suspensorium in their voice box. I think, I think I'm going to move on and try and find our jackal den. Taylor's had some luck this morning. She's found something else quite small.